I think it's very well known that I have a puppetry background. My mother was a puppeteer, and of course, perhaps not so well known, I did actually work in puppetry myself. One of my first jobs was working at the Little Angel Theatre in London, so I'm actually used to puppets and handling them, although I'm not a puppeteer. Um, but this is a fantastic group. Um, what's the background? Well, this is a collection um, that was some partly created, some owned by Waldo Lanchester. One of the great names. In yeah, history. one of the great uh, puppeteers. He really reinvented the art of puppetry in the 1920s. Which had sort of been lost. It had been lost, Is yes. it fair to say then, you know, he, he's the equivalent to the, the Charlie Chaplin of I comedy? Th I think that's quite true, yes. So it's that, it's, it's that important? It's that important, yes. He was that important mm. in, in puppetry fields. He bought a genuine Victorian troupe from around 1850, right. uh, which were trick marionettes primarily, which did all sorts of different tricks and things. Okay. And then he added to that his own puppets, yeah, which he, he carved. Because he had a travelling theatre yes. and was very well known within it. He was. Now, you're a puppeteer? I am a semi-puppeteer, semi-professional, yeah. but I do puppeteer these. And yes. what's your connection with these now? I'm now? the archivist for the British Puppeter Model Theatre Guild. Right. And we uh, were going to photograph these and we found out they were looking to be sold. Um, so we spoke to the owner and we decided to contact the Heritage Lottery, who after a long process uh, awarded us a grant to purchase them. So this is in a sense part of a national collection now. It is. Let's see something happen. Shall we have a Show look? Show me one. Let's have a look. This one's one of the Victorian ones, and he's the chair balancer, and he can do all sorts of little tricks and oh. do various wonderful. little tricks. Of course, the lads in all marionettes, they never behave exactly as you they're, want them to. They're very tricky things, they are. I remember that. Let's show you another one. There's this very nice one here, which is uh, quite unusual. So he's a sort of clown figure, yes, again a Victorian figure, one. Yes, and um, he's a disjointing oh, one. So they did all sorts of different tricks. So it was a real sort of magic, sh magic show, magic It really process. was, yes. I mean, yeah. we think of puppets very much as a children's entertainment. Yes. But they were well beyond that, weren't they? They were, they were. And certainly, uh, Waldo did things for children, but he also did things for adults as well. He did an opera and all sorts of different performances. Now, I'm not as good as you, but I'm going to have a go. I mean, I remember, you know, my mother very simply showing me how you make That's them right, work. It, yeah. No, the body shouldn't swing, I know that. <laughs> Yes. It's, it's getting that balance. The legs do it, yeah. But the other thing I like about this one, I think there's a trick, isn't there? there? Is. So I can if make you pull him do his trick. Bead, I'll pull that, and he'll, and he'll wave, wave his, his hat, and then he'll it. bow to you, exactly. and off he'll go. Um, as I say, I grew up doing that. I never got very good at it. But what we have here is this wonderful chapter of English theatrical history, yeah. which would otherwise have been lost. Yeah, I think they're very hard to value. Occasionally, the old puppet comes up. A whole troop is virtually it's unknown. Certainly Victorian. And yeah. a Victorian troop. I say, would it be fair to say between 500 and 1,000 pounds per figure? Yeah, I mean, that'd be very You'd be happy with yeah. that? Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at 20,000 pounds or more yeah. for the group. But they'll never be sold, so that's good to know. They're in very good hands. Yes. The national collection. They are. Thank, Thank you. you.